Okay, this is the section about inventing something. What are the processes involved in coming up with your own product or coming up with your own new device or tool or solution to a problem and bringing it to the market? Many of the key concepts we've discussed here, we discussed in the previous section about product development. They are equally relevant here. However, when it comes to inventions, prototyping is really the key. There are several ways to produce your invention. You can submit it to a company who will then develop it for you, and they will focus on marketing, and they will focus on getting it on shelves, and they will focus on building brand awareness but probably it will be under their brand and you will receive a licensing check. On some level you may receive recognition for your invention but ultimately you are handing off your invention to somebody else. If you wish to develop your own invention, if you wish to mass produce your own invention, here are the steps to mass producing your invention on your own. Step zero, have an idea. What are you passionate about? And this is important because you're going to need to spend a lot of time with this idea. It might take years for you to get it where it needs to be. You need to plan for at least two years of really working and probably a year of working in isolation on this idea before it's even ready to start shopping around. And the other thing you need to think about is what problem does this invention solve? We discussed in the introduction that it's really important to say why am I doing this? Is this the best solution or at least the best value to solve this problem adequately? The idea is worth almost nothing. It's really execution that is worth the most. Uh, there's a saying that the idea is maybe 10% of the equation, but execution is like 90%. It's also important to say that, you know, it's a good idea to talk to as many people as possible about your idea. Um, I would say that maybe you want to have some sense of trust for who you speak with, but keeping your idea secret and worry that somebody else will steal it from you is really a recipe for disaster because you need feedback. Ten minds working on an idea is far superior to just one. Idea, innovation, education, organization. Your idea is the beginning, then you must educate yourself. Get books, listen to podcasts, Podcasts will be an excellent companion for you as you go through this process. There will be times when what they're saying in the podcast will feel like it was tailored just for you. And reading books will give you a complete, thorough foundation. Um, I've included in the documents that are connected with this video a list of some books you merely might want to read and a list of a few podcasts you might want to give a listen to. Uh, they're free and uh, they have really solid advice from people who have done this before. The second step to the process is staying organized. So you want to document your ideas as much as possible. You want to have dated documentation of when you thought of something. So every so often when you make notes or specifically sit down to make notes about the process that you're undertaking and then email it to yourself. This way, in a court, in a legal system, you have a dated record of when your ideas happened and the steps that you took. Nobody can say that without documentation they had the idea before you. Maybe you didn't finish the patent process yet. You may be patent pending, but that's okay because the initial date is what really matters. Also, it may be a good idea to keep an inventor's notebook. And this is more for yourself than for anybody else. This is an extremely confusing process. It's confusing, it's easy to get distracted, and it's easy to just start to believe that it won't work for no reason. It's fear of success. As you begin to make progress, the responsibility of it just wells up inside you. So keep a schedule, plan your dates and procedures, and you know that will include milestones that you want to achieve and how long you think certain processes that you can envision should take and the order in which they should come in. So that in that moment of block you can just look at your book and say, ah, I know where I'm at. It's like a map that you've drawn up for yourself when the idea was still fresh, when you were still connected with reality. So 
uh, step three is to conduct market research. You want to get to know your customer. You, you want to get to know who could be your customer. And oftentimes, the people who you originally thought were going to be your perfect market is just a portion. For instance, Mark Zuckerberg uh, initially thought that Facebook was just going to be for college students, or even more specifically, Ivy League college students. But it turns out he drastically underestimated his own idea. Facebook has become for literally everybody. And not just people, but businesses too. But don't just do it online. You want to conduct surveys. You want to do focus groups. You want to try to ask people isolated questions about specific issues. You want to show them your prototype and see what they have to say. How does it feel in their hand? Can they actually see themselves using it? How much would they pay for it? How much would they not pay for it? Because, I mean, you don't want to ask too little for your uh, product, but you really don't want to ask too much either. Or you'll never sell it either way. Because you don't really want to ask too little for your product, but you don't want to ask too much either, or else you won't sell it. Uh, a book I highly recommend is called The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. And what he spends over half of the book talking about is how you receive feedback for your ideas. You have an idea, you put forth a hypothesis about what the idea should be, and then you start to talk to people. Once you run focus groups, you're going to receive feedback. And you should split test your results so that you show some people one thing, show some people another thing, see what they have to say about it. And the biggest and perhaps the most difficult part of it is accepting what they say to you. They're going to tell you things that you don't like to hear. Sometimes they're going to tell you that they don't like the idea altogether. It's important to ask them why. But if enough people say it, maybe it's a good idea to pivot your idea, to change it in a way, to think about something new. Because holding on to an idea that's not going to work is just a waste of your life. Uh, some great online marketing tools that you can use if you don't have time to go into a company and establish in-person surveys is SurveyMonkey. Uh, SurveyMonkey is an online service that has uh, stored surveys about different topics, but also you can initiate your own paid surveys. And it's actually much cheaper than having people come in and sit in a room and uh, respond in person. There's a limit to what you can get from them because the, the customer can't hold it in their hand. However, it's just a valuable resource to get it done quickly and keep on moving. Uh, survey all you can. Master your niche. And then you want to do a competitive analysis. You want to look at your competitors. What are their similar products? Take those similar products into your survey groups as well. What is the survey group saying about your similar product? Do they like it? What things don't they like? Those are the specific things you need to listen for because that is what you can put into your own product. You know, how is the problem being solved currently? Is it being solved at all? Do people know it's a problem actually? You know, understanding the who, what, and why of your product uh, it's worth the time investment. So then the fourth step is the patent process. You can go out and get a patent for your idea. Almost every inventor thinks that's the first thing that they should do. Oh, I've invented something. I need to patent it so it's mine. Later I can make a business from it. But the patent process can sometimes take years. And if you invest all of your resources in the patent process, you probably, probably will get nothing done. What's easier to do is to get a provisional patent. And a provisional patent gives you a year from the time-dated stamp of your beginning, which proves that you got started, which proves that you had this idea when you had it, even more than perhaps emailing the idea to yourself, even though that is valid, because a court is just people listening and deciding. So th the truth is what they really want, not whatever documentation you get. But if you're going to go up against big companies, eventually you do want your patent. Patents are expensive to defend. So being patent pending gives you a year to find out if your idea will work at all. 
So you go patent pending, and then you organize everything else. But it's not important to do it in the beginning. It's important to figure out what you're doing first. And you know, also you don't want to infringe on somebody else. So doing your patent research anyway is a good idea. Uh, you can go to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. They will show you a majority of the patents in the world. And they will protect you from uh, a majority of the problems. You know, not all people who hold patents are ready to defend them. But there are patents that are in the hands of guys who are strictly lawyers. And they're just waiting for the opportunity to come after you. I mean, they are pirates. We call them patent trolls. And they're going to accuse you of being a thief when they are actually the thing that they are accusing you of. So be careful with that. Uh, and possibly, it depends on what your product is, and you may want to consult a lawyer about this, but possibly it, it's a good idea to file for a trademark. A, a trademark protects the words and appearance and colors and design of your product. And in that way, it sort of it protects some vital elements of your idea so that you can move forward for a reasonable price. Step five, develop a prototype of your invention. Honestly, this is perhaps the funnest part. Go to the craft store, go to a tool and die shop, get the parts made. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a professional quality. It just has to demonstrate what the thing you're trying to do is. And so maybe you're inventing a new kind of um, uh, tool. Well, the tool and die shop can fashion the metal pieces, and you can get the fabrics you need, or the paint you need, or the uh, sort of interesting surfaces you need from a good quality, large enough craft store, and then just put it all together. You know, it gives you an opportunity to develop the thing in your own home before you take it to a manufacturer. And you're going to need to find a manufacturer, and I highly recommend you find one close to you in the beginning. Obviously, you want to outsource later, but uh, going to a local manufacturer allows you to sort of control the situation. You are shoulder to shoulder with them, you are seeing them in person, you're explaining what you want in your own language, and they can help you get to the next level of your prototype. You know, hammer it out. Uh, they can help you dictate the prototype onto paper, which serves as a map. And they can help you make the first several hundred units of your prototype to get out into stores, to show to distributors. And then you go abroad. You can send it to China if you want to, or India, or if it's a really high-end product, send it to Italy, or Germany, or France. And get it produced once you know that it will sell, once you know that merchants will be interested in selling it, once you've focus grouped it, once you've sent it back to survey. Make your prototype again and you know, focus group it again. Have it surveyed again once it's complete. One important detail is that producing thousands of something will be cheaper per unit than producing hundreds of it. But if you haven't focus grouped it properly, if you haven't surveyed it properly, and that means focus grouping at every step, after you complete every chapter of the development process, you focus group again. If you haven't done that properly, you might end up with two or three thousand of something in your basement for the rest of your life. So after you've done this, after you've prototyped, after you have a functional prototype, it's time to create a business plan. Because even though you're an inventor and you have this wonderful product, it's still a business. So while you're waiting to receive it back from whatever manufacturer you're dealing with, sit down and write your business plan. Uh, as we've included in a, elsewhere in this course, uh, the business plan section generally consists of basic concept, strategy for implementation, market analysis, competitor analysis, as we just said, and then the credibility of your team. This is important because you may look for funding. So you want to have a good credit record. 
You want your team to have some experience in this sort of work. And then you want to have financial projections. So you need to make a good financial plan, which thoroughly hashes out how you will spend your money. Probably you will need to start off with your own small budget, develop your prototype on your own. Remember that every prototype you develop with a manufacturer, you are going to have to pay for. They're not going to give you anything for free. Maybe if you can make friends with them, they'll be a little bit flexible with you. But for the most part, it's your responsibility all the way through. So save some money before you get started. But the business plan helps you organize your own actions. Just as the inventor's notebook did during the initial process, the business plan helps you stay focused, frees you from confusion during the business formation process. And also, in conjunction with your business plan, you want to prepare your elevator pitch. You never know when you're going to need to talk about it with influential people. And so you want to really work down the explanation of what you're doing and why you're doing it and why it's a good idea for you to be doing it to as few sentences as possible. Maybe answer each one of these questions with one sentence. I'm doing this because I think this is a good product because I think we are the right people to do it because. Bam, bam, bam. So then the seventh step is connecting with other entrepreneurs and inventors. It is really a good idea to have a mentor through this process. Somebody who has already done something similar, they will be more than glad to help you. Chances are they're looking back at their career and they would be very excited to participate in something worthwhile. You know, there's a quote by Robert Kiyosaki from Rich Dad, Poor Dad that anywhere you go, there is somebody else who's already been there. And it's more than just working online to find people who are interested and can write you messages and respond with emails. Go find a living community where you can experience groupthink, where you can experience uh, a collective mentality, the emotions, the, the excitement, the vigor, you know, uh, where they can tell you tips over a joke when you're standing with cocktails, when they can maybe accidentally divulge something that will really help you that they weren't expecting to share, a secret. And don't be afraid to share your idea. It is not your idea that will make you successful. It is the 1,000 other choices that you will make that will make you successful. It's not about necessarily surprising your customers. It's not about necessarily surprising the market. It's about making shrewd decision after shrewd decision. It's much more about outrunning them than anything else. And you're going to need that valuable feedback. So talk about it. Share your idea. Ask people what they think. It's just like with your survey groups. Ask people what they think about comparable products. These are knowledgeable people, suddenly, who have done the manufacturing process. So they can give you a unique perspective on the advice that they give you. Uh, Meetup.com is a really good forum to find such groups. And no matter how you feel personally in social environments, this is one place where you're going to be with like-minded people who will immediately respect you because they recognize that if you're here, it's because you are taking some initiative and you are taking the risk on your own idea. And that's respectable. So, books, podcasts, mentors, potential clients, potential sales outlets, all have something to offer you. So then we go on to step eight. You got a market test and you got a focus group again. This time it's about how you will market your finished product. And that includes price, packaging, if at all the entire package together of your product is original, how it will feel to see it on the shelf, if they would pick it over other packaging. And you know, how clear is your intent? How obvious is the purpose of this product based on the marketing choices that you've made? How much do they like your logo? How much do they like your color scheme? You can ask them about social media that you've developed around this product. And respect their advice because they came to answer you and their opinion is legitimate, just as legitimate as yours. And then it's time for production. 
And so you've chosen your manufacturer who did your prototype, and probably it's a good idea to get started with the general production with them as well, because stores may have a different opinion. You've seen a lot of products that get into stores, and then they just sit there. They end up on the clearance shelf, and maybe they don't even sell then. So all the focus grouping in the world didn't work for this other inventor. It just turned out that the product didn't work. And sometimes that will happen. So you want to stay with your initial manufacturer. And if you go with two or three manufacturers, the cat's out of the bag. And they are the one group of people who really can steal your idea because they understand manufacturing it down to the nuts and bolts. So sticking with one initial manufacturer in the beginning is uh, it's a really good idea. That's a relationship of trust. This course also has sections for setting up your marketing, building your team, uh, managing finances. So I highly advise you to look at those. And you know, it's just some general tips for uh, producing an invention. It probably include don't go it alone. You know, you want a quality team around you, and you want a mentor, and you want confidants, and ultimately you want a manufacturer that you can trust. Uh, you know, take time to do your research. There is such a thing as researching your whole life, but six months of research is not unheard of. You know, a year of product development is not unheard of, and it'll save you three years of bringing the product to market that was a mistake. You know, work on your messaging. Your elevator pitch, get it down to a few sentences. Your social media presentation, your logo is important. Um, the photographs you take, the photographs you take of yourself. Uh, your social media should probably include the development process so that your customers or potential customers feel like they're part of it. And no matter what business you're running, I highly recommend associating a community online with it. Even if it's not directly about the product that you're personally developing, developing a community around the perhaps larger industry or the general subject matter will collect the right kind of people to show your product to eventually. So work on your message, work on your slogans, make sure it's crisp and sharp and clever. As clever as you want them to think your product is. And then just continually test your product. Be willing to change. Be willing to say, I was wrong. Be willing to say, this needs to be updated. Uh, we need to evolve. We need to continue to grow. It's scary to change what you believe sometimes, but it's much worse to realize that you've wasted how much time. Just expect to pay for what your manufacturer creates. You're not going to get any freebies from them because it's their whole business. You know, it's usually best to start with a small quantity. And a final warning is that you should make sure that your product is perfect, or as perfect as you can make it before you go into mass production. Because having to change it after you've produced a thousand of a unit will destroy your budget. So in conclusion, there's numerous steps involved. The idea is hardly anything at all. Execution is key. You know, think long term. And the people that you have around you are just as much important as the plan that you've made, or the product that you've developed, or the ideas you have about what you will do. So build a quality team and trust them.